Hi everyone, my name is Aidan Johnston and I'm a Digital Learning Systems Developer at Glasgow Caledonian University. I'd like to talk to you about putting the access into accessible teaching materials at Glasgow Caledonian University. Like all institutions in reaction to the COVID pandemic, we pivoted to online learning literally overnight and the VLE became the main tool to deliver um, the bulk of the learning and teaching along with um, webinar tools to replicate seminars and lectures. Um, and obviously, along with that came the use of screencast um, for delivering um, many PowerPoint tutorials. So video became a real preferred direct replacement for these timetable lectures and tutorials as well. Uh, many of the tools um, that we utilise partially met accessibility legislation and at GCU we use Blackboard Collaborate Ultra as it's integrated with our VLE but it's not been without issue um, as it does not provide automated captioning during or after um, a webinar has taken place. So that was the first of our challenges and the second emerging issue we uncovered was the issue of the general accessibility of all the learning materials that were now beginning to be deposited in our VLE. So at GCU, we'd been reviewing accessibility long before COVID um, began, and we'd been scanning the horizon for software solutions and tools that would be a good fit to complement our existing learning and teaching systems. But not only that, tools that are intuitive and easy to use and which also bring additional benefits to our student and staff users. Um, and we needed to give careful consideration that these tools would also fit into existing academic workflows in terms of content creation and delivery. But more importantly, that these tools would actually integrate with their existing um, tool sets that we have. So two tools were identified and rolled out and promoted to staff to support them in the provision of accessible teaching materials. They are Blackboard Ally and Planet eStream, along with Microsoft Azure Automated Speech to Text Caption Service. So we'll look at the first one, which is Blackboard Ally. Um, and we were ahead of the curve in some respects because we rolled out Ally just before the pandemic began um, and Blackboard Ally is an accessibility toolkit that's deeply integrated with our VLE GCU Learn which utilises Blackboard Ultra and Ally is extremely valuable in helping our staff to meet the challenges around accessibility in three key ways. The first way is it automatically checks anything that has been uploaded to the VLE and in terms of it meeting the WCAG 2.1 accessibility standards. It then scans and assesses and gauges accessibility of those uploaded resources um, and delivers useful guidance um, to assist academic staff and instructors to improve the accessibility of their content. But thirdly, and most importantly, it also provides students with a vast range of accessible alternative formats to the original files that have been provided by the instructor. So going back to how it um, gauges accessibility, it does that in, in, in using a scale, which is shown at the bottom of the screen, starting from red and low, medium and amber, and then light green for high, and then dark green for perfect, 100% uh, in terms of meeting accessibility. So what I'm going to do is guide you through now here how it actually works within our VLE. So here are some materials that have been uploaded to a sample module and we can see the score has been provided. Now staff only see this um, gauge, the, the, the ally gauge, and that is prompting them or giving them a call to action that they need to do something to improve. And in this case, we have a PowerPoint um, that has only been scored at 52%. And it's telling us on the right hand side what this means and why it's been given a score, um, an AMBER score. But it's also helpfully um, guiding the, the academic to making changes to improve that score and make it more accessible. So they can simply go in, make the adjustments based upon the advice given and then re-upload it. And in this case, the second example we can see here is a journal article which has a score of 99% as a PDF file. And in this case, um, the colour contrast is not as good as it could be, but 99% is quite high. But essentially, it's educating the instructor on what this means and they can make a judgment call there and then if they wish to make adjustments to that. But as it's in green, no action is required. And the next example is an image that's been uploaded without an alt tag or image description. So it's got a score of 8% 
and it does explain to the academic why the score is low again, what image descriptions are and why they actually matter and how they help um, a user who has um, a visual impairment. And it also then guides them how to write a good description. So it's being helpful. It's actually giving meaningful examples that illustrate um, how to remedy the problem. And in this case, um, you can then go back into Ally and actually write an image description and add that immediately without having to actually go back into the module itself. You update it in real time and then reanalyzes that and the score goes up to 83%. So it's automatically helping um, instructors to make changes on the fly. Now that's the benefits to the academic staff, but what benefits does it have for students? So we can see the alternative formats icon and this allows students to download any of the resources presented in a module into these different formats, making it very convenient indeed for students to access their learning materials in alternative accessible formats that are of their own choosing. And in this case, type PDF, HTML, EPUB, electronic braille or audio. And it really comes down to what students actually prefer. So it benefits our staff and our student users. So one year on from the rollout of Ally um, at GCU, we've undertaken some um, analysis of this and we've discovered that obviously there has been a massive increase in the amount of content um, deposited in our VLE, which is not a surprise. But there's also been an increase in the overall accessibility of new and existing content, which is really encouraging. And we are putting that down to the fact that we have made Ally available to staff so that they are actively um, looking at the feedback they've been given when they upload resources by Ally and acting upon that advice and making those changes. So we also uncovered the type of formats um, that are most common in the VLE and surprising, not surprisingly, they're PDFs, documents or PowerPoint presentations. But this is important for us as it helps to provide clear areas for focus in relation to CPD for our academic staff in the area of digital accessibility going forward. So it's actually helped us at GCU um, and informed um, our CPD planning for the future. And of the modules that we looked at in March, um, the Ally score, um, the lowest was 67.1 um, and the highest was 97%, which positively rates them as green or dark green on the accessibility rating, which is very encouraging indeed but there's more work to be done there. So that's the first tool looking at how we, we help staff um, with learning resources. The second area, as I mentioned, is that of video and captioning and automated captioning. Um, as I said, there's more and more tutorials and lectures moved online last year. Um, at GCU, we, we started um, working with Blackboard Collaborate because we had it available, but laterally we moved to using Microsoft Teams. Um, as a, a, an alternative webinar platform. But we had to make sure that the university was compliant with accessibility legislation, which is shown on the table on screen. And in this case, these um, artifacts are considered recorded video with audio. And to meet the legislation, they need to have captions um, of what's actually being said. And in this case, we did not actually have anything um, available. Um, and we had to then start looking um, and find a solution that was going to be not only scalable, but also easy to use for our academic staff that fits with existing workflows. So I'm pleased to say that um, when you're on now, we do have a recommended cost effective solution for providing captions and transcripts if they're required. But it's also now a requirement for all staff to provide these in line with the guidance shown on the table in the previous slide. And at GCU, we have Planet Extreme, which is a um, multimedia streaming um, media server we introduced last year. Um, and it has the ability to integrate with various third party automated captioning services. And one of those is Microsoft Azure's speech to text service. Um, and that is the one that we actually looked at going forward because it was easy to integrate because we were a Microsoft institution but it also was extremely cost effective um, as a solution going forward for um, the, the automated captioning process of a lot of video and audio items that we did anticipate. So the next step was to run a pilot with staff um, using the Stream to Azure integration. We did this in January to April 
um, earlier this year. And we identified, as shown on screen, um, the, the first and foremost, it generates speech to text transcriptions and subtitles for recorded items. Um, but it also gives um, users the, the ability to easily edit those captions all within a web-based environment and all requiring no real training or skill um, um, for doing that. And that was very beneficial because it's an integrated part of eStream. It also generated SRT caption files, which can be used with third party systems such as my, um, Google's uh, YouTube and other multimedia platforms. So it is um, using standards based technology. Um, as I said, generally quick and straightforward um, to use for all our staff members, but most importantly, um, it integrates um, with our existing Microsoft Azure architecture and cost effectively, it's providing um, one hour's worth of um, audio to text for 75 pence per hour, which is extremely, extremely cost effective. So in terms of the workflow, um, as I said, that's an important part of um, procuring and identifying a solution going forward. And I'm pleased to say that because Planet eStream easily integrates with um, our VLE, this workflow for automated transcriptioning of audio and video materials that integrates with the VLE um, was enabled very easily. Um, the Planet eStream web-based subtitle editor, as I said, offered a quick and easy way to check and amend transcription files for enhanced accuracy. And the workflow shown on screen um, is quite simple. There's not that many clicks for staff to actually get their audio and video materials, their lectures, their tutorials, whatever it may be, videos, um, into the Planet Ustream system, but also then straight into the VLE and, and hopefully in a, a quick and efficient manner that saves them time so what we're going to show you on screen very quickly is our VLE. And again, this is how we add resources and um, video and audio um, resources that need to be transcribed. And um, we simply build um, the content from the menu items normal. We upload it. We're then taken via a special GCU button in the VLE straight into the subtitle area where they can submit it to the Microsoft Azure queue quickly and easily. Once it's returned, they simply click on the subtitle editor it's all loaded in the same web screen. And from here, staff can then review the learning um, material that's been transcribed um, and they can go through it and they can see very clearly on the right hand side and um, the subtitles. They can adjust them. They can adjust the color, the font size. They're in complete control um, of all of the subtitles that they then want to present back to the students when they access that learning material through the VLE. So the pilot uncovered um, a lot of interesting feedback, which has helped us um, going forward. Uh, the first being the processing speed of um, the, the video and audio that's been captioned. And um, we've been working with the product vendor to bring that queuing time down even further. And we'll continue to work with them to make that as quick and as streamlined as possible. Um, we've also looked at accuracy. And again, because Microsoft Azure um, is a cloud-based AI engine, it's getting better all the time. Microsoft use it across a variety of their services, um, Cortana and Microsoft Teams is one example. And the more users it has, the more accurate it is becoming. So when people ask us how accurate is it, we say it's hard to pinpoint due to factors such as accents and dialect, the audio quality, multiple speakers. But what we are uncovering through feedback is that the, the quality is and the accuracy and the quality is becoming more and more um, accurate as time goes on. In terms of the ability to create transcripts, Plan Ustream also has the ability to use an SRT file for staff to um, take that resource, that transcribed resource, and turn it into a transcript as well. And the last piece of feedback we received is the actual uploading um, of these video and audio resources. And this is something that we're actually unable to, to do anything about as people are working at home because we all have varying broadband speeds. But as time goes on and we do return to campus, uh, we've assured staff that this will be much quicker when we do um, return to using the university's um, very fast um, Ethernet network. So in terms of post-pilot um, rollout and obviously CPD training for staff on all these resources, 
Um, they fall under the umbrella of GC Going Digital, which was launched last summer to help staff to prepare for academic year 2021, which was predominantly online. So we have a SharePoint site which um, hosts all of the, the recordings of the webinars we run on all these tools. Um, we do have video Camtasia um, created resources which go through um, exactly how to use these new tools and resources. But we also have a Padlet as well, which we use um, comprehensively and we do introduce to our staff users at these webinars and training events. And we do encourage staff to ask the questions, but this also then becomes a very comprehensive resource bank and a very useful FAQ as well. So in summary, both these tools are definitely helping to improve the learning experience for all our students and not just those with additional accessibility requirements. The tools also go a long way to helping our staff not only meet the legislative requirements, but also understand why digital materials need to be accessible in order to provide an inclusive learning experience for all of our learners. As I said, GCU um, is now able to provide staff with a captioning solution to ensure that video content is accessible to all our learners. And staff are now expected to have learned how to use Planet eStream um, for captioned and um, recorded videos by the end of trimester B in the current academic year. And we've also created and updated our policy and guidance on accessibility compliance so that staff are fully aware of all of the expectations as we go into the new academic year. Thank you.